Well, analysts say that John Malone's bid for struggling bookseller Barnes & Noble may be less cable cowboy and more Warren Buffett in style, finding an opportunity to profit from an out-of-favor company. For more, we are joined by John Chachas, who knows a lot about the media business. He's the former co-head of Lazard's Global Media Advisory Group and also now the founder and managing partner of Matusala Advisors, which is an investment banking advisory firm uh, focused on media and digital companies, which we have been talking a lot about lately with LinkedIn. Um, okay, you disagree. You don't think this is Buffett style. You think this is a shrewd move by by Malone. I don't know. I'd say it's not Buffett style. I think he, I think he buys companies extraordinarily well. If you look at a 50-year history, in uh, but not in, Buffett style in that you know Buffett collects companies and puts them in his in his portfolio. Yeah, or, you well, know, in, in his conglomerate. I, I'd, I'd say that Malone collects companies too. In the last five years, he's purchased 20 more, 25 uh, e-tailing and retailing companies that have been built on the back of his investment in QVC, his 32% interest in HSN. Uh, this is a man with a PhD in operations research, and uh, I don't know that anything is done that doesn't have some clever tax attribute on the one hand and a <laughs> right. tactical reason on the other. So, so how does it fit? Well, it, it seems to me that um, I, I guess my best bet, who knows, is this asset has in, in it the Nook, which is an interesting little uh, device mm -hmm. that has had a, a terrific reception, particularly by women. The color Nook has come out of the gates much better than people thought. Now the, the Kindle color is going to come out soon too, so it's it's early to see. But it wouldn't surprise me if someone looked at it on the one hand said, I'm buying a business that I understand, a, a retailing business that I understand at a pretty low valuation, and mm -hmm. I get the digital upside for free. Well, the digital upside is a big, a big piece of this whole puzzle here, because if you look at the most recent quarter, end of January 29, in terms of reporting here, when it comes down to the online content, that had a 52% growth rate in terms of on, for which ebooks is part of that whole discussion, versus mm -hmm. just a 7% growth rate in their comparable store sales, so, you know, stores that have been open at least a year. So right. perhaps that's the reason why he's going after that particular niche and hoping he can meld it right with some of the other properties that he has out there, media or otherwise. Well, you could certainly see the the uh, the assumption that if people are comfortable with that device, everybody loves the iPad. It's mm -hmm. gone great gangbusters. But at night, there are some people who like to just sit and read. And I think that what publishers in America would tell you is there are certain kinds of uh, certain kinds of consumers who don't want uh, the high test computer in their hand in their bed. They actually would like to just read. On the other hand, if that device can actually move people one step closer to, purch to purchasing and, and commerce, uh, that may be on, on Malone's mind. John, are there any lessons that the big media companies can take from a deal like this? Because we know none of the big media companies want to spend a lot of their cash because they don't want to pay more for another company than what their own companies are worth. That's one of the reasons they haven't done a lot of deals. But Here's an example of something that maybe wasn't getting as much attention because we were all focused on LinkedIn and everything social media related. Does it suggest maybe the media companies might try to do something a little more innovative? Well, I think you know, I think that's getting uh, that's that's not quite fair to the media companies. Media companies are sitting on a fair bit of cash as they've watched the distribution apparatuses around their products really change, and mm -hmm. I think they're investing to try to figure out how to take advantage of that and to harness that to protect their traditional assets. Um, it seems to me that what this does tell us is that there are people who are willing to take some bets to. Makes, to take some risks, okay. and, and Malone's one of those. We have, I think, right, we have this, this graph or this chart of some of the me media companies uh, that do have a lot of cash, and at the top of that list is Google uh, with about uh, $36 billion. Uh, you've got uh, Apple as well, uh, with zero debt, by the way, at Apple. And some shareholders are, are, are getting impatient, especially at Apple, saying, what are you going to do with all that money? Well, it's interesting. If you go down the top media digital, what I call the digital the digital giants, they probably, between the three or four of them, have 70, 80, 90 billion dollars of cash and very little debt. Google only rinse, recently went out and issued a little bit of debt, really, to right. establish About a bench. Didn't dollars. need any, didn't need the money, but established sort of a benchmark level in, the, in these attractive credit markets. Media companies also have cash, but not nearly as much as those great big giants. Do. I think there is going to be a question that arises soon. I mean, how much cash is enough cash? I know that they're investing tremendous amounts of capital to build uh, cloud technology to innovate in the music market. There's all this innovation going on to, re to relaunch products. But there's an awful lot of cash that's accumulated on those balance sheets. And as we saw in Microsoft's case, at some point, the pressure is very great to push that back out to the is owners. There a is there some sort of risk aversion going on among the CEOs, then, that are running these companies? You know, I think there's probably the, the, the argument is we are constantly uh, using our cash to enhance long-term value. And we saw 
saw Microsoft just make a bet eight and a half billion dollars to buy an asset that surprised people, but they felt was really important in the portfolio. If you asked uh, the leaders at, at, at uh, Amazon and Apple and Google, what's going on with your cash? I suspect they would say, we're deploying it very, very well, right. and we will continue to deploy it very well. And it's hard to argue, okay. based on the productivity, that they're, they're, that that they're, they're not. not. That they're, they're not doing that. John, thank you. Great to see you again. Nice seeing you, Betty.